The hardest part about programming is dealing with state and the transitions between different states. This is where almost all bugs and programs are introduced, and as your application grows, the state complexity grows massively and it becomes very hard to manage, which introduces a lot of bugs. This is why I really love any library that helps work with managing state, and one of those libraries is xState, and it makes managing state incredibly easy. Welcome back to Web Dev Simplified. My name's Kyle and my job is to simplify the web for you so you can start building your dream project sooner. And we're gonna be talking all about xState. And xState is essentially a state management library that uses state machines to manage your state. And the really nice thing I like about it is they have both a visualizer and an editor that you can use to make sure you can actually visually understand what's happening and visually edit what's happening, which is really nice to do. I'm gonna talk more about that later in the video. Now the first thing I want to do is I want to dive into the docs and kind of give you a really brief example of what xState looks like and how a state machine works. So if you're unfamiliar with state machine, essentially you have defined states where you can be in and they represent the different states of your application. So like if you have a fetch request, you have a loading state, you have a success state, you have an error state, for example. In this example, we're looking at a simple traffic light. We have a green state, a yellow state, and a red state. And the nice thing about using a state machine is you can specify different transitions between your states. So we can go from green to yellow, we can go from yellow to red, and we can go from red to green. But you'll notice it's impossible for me to go from a red light to a yellow light or from a yellow light to a green light. And that's just because those are transitions that do not exist in our state machine. Now this is really nice because it prevents your application from getting into a bad part of state. In that fetch example when I talked about when we have a loading state, an error state, and we have a success state, Imagine if we used booleans to represent that. So we have like is success and we have is error. Now, what happens if both of those booleans are set to true? Well, we're somehow both in an error state and a success state, which is obviously something that's not supposed to happen and is bad, but can happen if you're not using something like a state machine to manage all of your state transitions and your state flow. Now with xState, you can obviously get much more complex than this simple light example. And I'm actually gonna show you a full working example of how like a fetch request would work inside of a state machine using xState. But as you can see, the code for writing this out is pretty verbose actually. We have a lot of code that's going to be inside of a giant JSON object that kind of handles how everything happens between our different states. But the main thing you'll notice is we define some states. And for example, our states, we have green, we have yellow, and we have red, and then we define our transitions. So that's what this on is saying. So after our timer expires, we go to yellow, we go to red, or we go to green. That's kind of exactly what's happening inside of this state machine here. Now talking about that visualizer, if we just jump over to here, you can see that there's a place called xstate-catalog.com. I'll link this down in the description for you, but it has a bunch of different examples of different xstate visualizations. So if we click on this authentication one here, this one's pretty simple you can see that we have an initial loading state where we come in, which is where this checking if logged in is true here. So we're checking if this user is logged in. And then if that user is logged in, let me just scroll this up real quick. We have three different possibilities. We're gonna say, okay, they are logged in and that'll move us to this logged in state. We're gonna say they're not logged in and that'll move us to the logged out state. Or we're gonna say there's some type of error checking this because like we're doing like an API request and there's an error, then obviously we're going to move to the logged out state because that's going to be our default. So you can see I can click on this and now I'm in the logged in state, I can log out move back to the logout state, and for example, move around. And you notice all of these different actions have different events and things tied to them. So for example, when I enter the logged out state, navigate me to the auth page so, like, so I can log in and remove all of the user details because I logged out. When I click on login, you can see it says do and assign the user details to context. So it's saving those user information details. So you can tie all your different events to the transitions. So when you transition, you can do different things and you can make sure you handle all the different states that are happening. The really nice thing about X state is it handles all of your state and all of your logic in one single place. And that way the rest of your application can just not even care about state or logic, which makes all of your other code very easy to write. And then your state machine handles all of your complex and difficult to write code. But with the visualizer and editor, the code is a little bit easier to write than otherwise. So with that done being talked about, I wanna show you the example that I'm going to be using here. Let's just refresh this page, move this over, and here we have our example code. And this example code I have written in VS Code, and you can see we have this giant file here. This is all the code for my state machine. Just ignore this code right here, that's just a comment. But otherwise, everything right here is all of the code for handling all of my state and all of my logic in my entire application. And then you can see here, this file right here, I mean, it's super small, the entire thing fits on one screen. And most of this is just getting elements and then hooking up event listeners. That's really all that's happening. And all the other logic for fetching works just fine. So I'm, for example, fetching all the posts from the JSON placeholder API, click fetch. You can see all the data shows up on my screen just like right here, right fine. And the nice thing about this is I actually have automatic retries in place. So if it fails to fetch, it'll automatically retry. And I can also do a manual retry if, for example, the failure happens too many times. 
Now inside of Visual Studio Code, what you can do is you can actually download an extension called XState VS Code by Stately. This is the actual people that create XState. And this is going to give you an editor built into VS Code. So you don't have to use the one online. You can use the one built into VS Code. And the nice thing about that is it'll live update your code. I wanna make this full screen so it's a little easier to see. And you can see this open visual editor button. That's what's giving me this comment right here. If I click on that, you can see I have this editor showing up right here. I'm just gonna zoom this in so it's a little bit easier for you to see. There we go, that should hopefully, um, there we go. That's a little bit better right there. So as you can see, this contains all of the logic for my entire state machine. So I have my idle state, this is where I start at. And when I click the fetch button, it's going through this fetch action to my loading state. And in the loading state, I'm trying to fetch my data with this invoke. And then I have a few different things. If I if successfully get the data, I'll go to the success state. If there's an error fetching my data, I'll go to this failure state. And here's where my retry logic comes in. After a certain delay, which is specified by this retry delay, I'm going to attempt to re-get the data by going back into the loading state. I'm gonna to continue to do that over and over again based on how many times I fail until I get to the point where I can no longer do any retries because I've reached my limit. That's what this if statement does right here. And then I'm saying, okay, if I don't have anything that I can do, I have no more retries left, go to the error state. And then if I want to, I can manually retry right here by clicking on the retry button. I can simulate this to see, okay, we're in the fetch state. And if we have successful data, you can see it goes to success. Everything's fine. Nothing else can happen. If I click on fetch again and there's an error, you can now see I go into the state where I can do my retry. So I do a retry, fails, retry, fail, retry, fail. Okay, I've reached my limit. Now what's going to happen is I go into this else state where there's an error. And now if I want, I can manually retry and let's say that was successful. There we go. That's how that works. So it's really nice, you can visualize this, you can simulate it. It makes it really easy to kind of see what's going on inside of X state. So I really like all of that. But now let's actually see what the heck is happening inside my code. The nice thing though, one thing I wanna mention is if I change something inside of here, so I go back into the edit mode, if I change this to be like error two, all the places where I have that referenced in my code are also going to update. So if I come over here and search for error two, you can see that it's updating everywhere. So I really like that because it just makes the authoring experience of this so much easier. Let's close out of that and let's get my screen back off to the side here so we can see everything side by side. And now let's actually take a look at what's going on inside of this state machine. So the main thing we wanna look at is all of our different states. We have our idle state and the only thing that can happen in our idle state is we can make a fetch action. So when we do an action called fetch, we're gonna change the target of our state to loading. So this is just saying change to the loading state. Now in the loading state, once we enter here, I wanna invoke a function which is going to be called fetch data. Now the nice thing if we search for that, you can see down here we have that defined right here. And all this is doing is just doing a simple fetch request for us to that URL. Super straightforward, really easy. We don't really need to dive into that code. It's just a simple fetch request. Then what's happening is we have this on done and this on error. On done says that it was successful, so we move to our success state. And on error means that there's a failure of some type, so we move to our failure state. Our success state is our final state, so that's why we've typed it as final. And now our failure state is where a little bit of our more complex logic comes in. You can see we're using this after property. And that just means after a specific delay, do something. So in our case, we have this thing called retry delay. And if we search for that, you can see our retry delay is just our number of retries times a thousand. Super straightforward. So we're just doing however many times we've retried, we just slowly take more and more time before the next retry. And then what happens here is we can see that we have some stuff going on inside of our target and our action. So first of all, we have our condition here of can retry. Again, if I search for that, you can see if we have less than two retries, we can continue to retry. So it limits us on the number of retries. And then whenever we do a retry, I wanna increase my retry count. So all that's doing is increasing the amount of my retries by one in my context. Now the important thing to understand about the context is it's just like a state variable. You can just put any amount of data in there that you want, it really doesn't matter. You just put data inside the context and that's it. It's just a state variable for your entire state machine to use. As you can see, we're updating that in a lot of places with our error, for example, or here we're setting some information in our context. That's what almost everything in here is doing is either reading data from our context or updating data in our context. So as you can see here, we're doing as many retries as possible. And if any of them are successful, it'll move to the success state. Otherwise, we're going to have an error and then it's going to move us to the error state. And then when we're in the error state, we can click retry to retry. Now, the final thing I wanna look at is the actual code here for how this actually is implemented and used. So as you can see here, we're getting our machine by importing it from that file. So we're just importing this giant object that we created with this create machine function. And we're just calling the interpret function built into the library and we're starting our machine. Now, depending on if you're using plain JavaScript, React, Vue, Svelte, they're gonna have different ways of starting up your machine, but it's pretty much going to work exactly the same. We're gonna have some type of send function. So you have service.send and we send it the event we wanna do. For example, in our case, here's a retry event, here's a fetch event.
And now let's actually look at the code and see what's happening because I also have this on transition, which is just updating all of our data and then it console logs every single time we change our state. So as you can see at the very beginning here, we're in the idle state and our context, which is like our state data has a retry set to zero. Now if I click on fetch, you can see that we're gonna go into the loading state. That's great. And you can see that our data now has the URL we're loading. And then after that, we go into the success state and it contains all of our data as well. And we're just printing that data out to the screen. Pretty straightforward stuff. Now, if I refresh, we're back on that idle state and I go to my network tab, I can put us in offline mode. And essentially that's going to emulate what happens if we fail a request because we're offline. So when I click fetch, you're gonna notice we get a bunch of failures showing up. First of all, we go into this loading state here and we try to do a fetch and of course it fails. We try to do another fetch, of course it fails. And as you can see, our retries is getting incremented every single time. Finally, at the very end, when we have no more requests we can make, you can see we set our error to say error loading resource and that shows up on our screen. And now if I want, I can click retry and it's going to do the exact same thing. It's gonna to try to do that up to my retry count and then show me an error message. But what happens if I click on fetch, for example? You'll notice here I'm clicking on it, but the actual state we're in, this error state, never actually changes. And the only reason it's logging that out is because of the way I have this on transition set up. Every time we call send, which we do every time we click the button, it's going to call this on transition, but we're not actually changing states, so we're not executing any of our code other than what's in that on transition, which honestly doesn't really matter that much. But as you can see, none of our actual state or anything is changing. And the reason for that is because we have no way to go from our error state using that fetch method. If we look again at our visual editor here, you can see when we're in the error state right here, the only event we can do is a retry event. We can't do a fetch event. We can't do any other event at all other than retry when we're in this error state. And that's the real key here. When you're in a particular state, you can only do the actions that that state allows you to do. And in our case, that is only a retry. So the only time anything will happen is when I click on this retry button here. And this is just scratching the surface of everything possible in X state. If you want to see a full tutorial of me covering everything possible in X state, I'm going to have a video on that linked right over here as soon as I record it. And with that said, thank you very much for watching and have a good day.